soil mechanics which will be done so today what we are going to uh, discuss is the specific gravity test using pyknometer or density model so before that discussing about a specific gravity i would like to explain the conditions of different soil uh, in a class also we have discussed a dry condition a bulk then saturated then somewhere the four condition we have discussed first we must have what is what is the different condition of soil for example i just took a dry soil of 500 ml uh, capacity i this contains 500 ml capacity for a known volume i just took dry soil i just filled up to 500 ml so now how to find this what type of density happening with this by this container of this dry condition so what are the density we are going to measure is dry density so what is density mass by volume so what i have to do is i know the self weight of this container that is uh, dead weight i once i just filled a sand for a 500 ml that is 500 cc uh, cubic centimeter out of filling the known volume of sand i have to measure the mass that is weight or mass that you can convert it uh, by 9.81 I have to measure the mass of a soil occupied by 500 ml. So by this mass by volume, I can find the density. This condition is called dry condition. What I am measuring is called dry density. The next is called bulk condition. In case of dry condition, it is pure of dry soil. There is no water content around each uh, surface of the particle. Meanwhile, in between the gap of the particle, there will be no presence of any water. by talking about degree of saturation volume of water present in a void to the total volume of voids so that will be zero because volume of water is zero so it is zero so now what i am doing is i am just pour some small amount of water for a same for a same volume so now what's happening you can visually you can uh, realize here the water is not uniformly distributed in between some particles that's the presence of water in some parts there will be no water so what we can come to know it is a bulk never all voids are occupied by water we can call it as a three phase diagram in case of dry condition two phase diagram that is uh, in a study in a soil mechanics two phase and three phase two phase means one is soil solid another is presence of air that is dry condition now in case of bulk condition there is a existence of three phase soil solids presence of water presence of air air and water present in a void so this condition is called bulk so now as we have added water the mass of the same 500 ml volume will be get increases so the density also get increases so what are the density we are measuring now is called bulk density so next condition is called saturated If I just keep on adding, once after filling of all voids, I just slowly add the water here. When I'm adding water, you can realize a bubbles coming out. It's nothing but whatever the water we are adding, the water will occupy the void space. Whatever the air present in that zone, we try to release up, come out. So now what what's happening is. all voids are occupied by now see here so this condition is called saturated all voids are occupied by all voids are occupied by water there is no presence of any air so in this condition here also there is a presence of two phase one is soil solid another is water all voids are occupied by water in this condition degree of saturation is 100 percentage or 1 All voids are occupied by water. There will be no presence of air. The formula for the degree of saturation is volume of water present in a void to the total volume of voids. When two values are same, numerator and denominator get cancelled each other, you will get one. So we can say for this condition, degree of saturation is one or hundred percent. Now, after this condition, so what are the density I am measuring at this condition? is called saturated condition so now i just keep on adding a water as all voids are already filled by 
water, whatever the water I am adding, it will be keep on the volume keep on increasing. Now the soil is in submerged condition. Below the water level, the soil is present. This condition is called submerged condition. So now what is the unit weight of soil alone? So whenever we are dropping a material inside a water, even if you can take a as a taking a bath in a swimming pool, if you just jump inside without any movement of your hands or legs, you can keep on moving inside. But up to particular distance only you can be able to move. We will have a friction that is called Archimedes principle. Whenever you just uh, 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 throw any material in uh, water, there will be upthrust balance force. So based on that, now the soil is in submerged condition. That is called submerged unit weight. Uh, based on using the Archimedes principle, that submerged density is equal to saturated density minus density of water. When talking about the unit weight, uh, submerged unit weight is equal to saturated unit weight minus unit weight of water. The conversion of uh, density of water and the uh, unit weight of water to go above. The density of water is around uh, 1 gram per cc or 1000 kg per meter cube. In a both the we can represent. While converting this unit kg into Newton, we have to multiply with 9.81, then we will get a density of water as 9810 Newton per meter cube. To simplify this, we are, uh, we are uh, decreasing the unit in a single integer 9.81 kilo Newton per meter cube. So this is a unit weight of the soil. So now let us get into the uh, pachymeter test. So let me roughly explain how we have to proceed the test not at all. First, we have to collect the soil sample from the site. We will never expect all the soils will be uniform. Uh, here, it contains large size particle also, very powdered particle also. In between, a sand of size around 4.75 mm like that also it will present. Uh, in case of site condition, there may be existence of wet condition also. We will never expect it is a fully dry. So once we take the soil from the site, in a sand bag we have to take it out. That once we take it to the laboratory, what we have to do is, we have to spread on the surface by keeping any uh, any material, a cloth or something at the bottom. Then above that we have to spread the soil. We have to leave it to the open atmosphere. That is called the natural uh, that is uh, because of natural temperature itself, the water present in the soil particles get evaporated. We will get dry sample. Once we got such sample, we have to take it into the laboratory. There is a two way. In case if we are taking any other wet soil, uh, any other clay soil, just like that we can't able to proceed. Uh, now I am talking about sandy soil, so I, I don't want to complicate that much. But in general procedure, what we have to do is, we have to take the soil sample with the help of this seed. This is called 4.75 mm seed. Uh, here, in this opening, the opening of sieve looks like a square opening. The dimension, the diagonal dimension represents the dimension of the sieve. Here, in each sieve, it may be represented here. I uh, hope you can able to see this. 4.75 mm. Here, based on IS code, the sieve numbers is different. Now, what are the soil samples we are taking out? First, we have to mix with water. Mix with water. In a bucket of water, we have to pour the all soil and mix it properly. It looks like a sludge. Then, with the help of 4.75 mm, we have to keep another bucket. Now, what are the slurry or uh, mixed with water mixed with soil? such combination we have to pour in this container. So all the particles higher than that of 4.75 will be retained on that. Less than 7.5 will flow below this. Here, whatever the material we are getting in a bucket is of liquid. So we, we can't able to directly uh, proceed the test. We have to wait for some time. All the soil particles will settle down. Uh, you, uh, you can realize in your uh, metro water also, Sometimes the water coming out with uh, 
some colored water. You just collect some uh, colored water. You just leave it for a few days. All the sediments that uh, particles will settle down at the bottom. Like that, we have to leave it for uh, 124 hours. Then the soil will be settled down at the bottom. Whatever the water present above that, we have to remove off. Then that will be spread over a surface, and we have to wait for 24 hours for natural dry. After that, we have to take a soil sample to the laboratory for testing all index properties. The first property we are going to discuss is let me highlight how to do. Uh, what are the apparatus we are using? Let me highlight here. Our lab instructor Rajesh will explain uh, uh, in detail what we have to do every day. So now we have collected the soil sample that we have to pour it in a, this uh, uh, seed, 4.75 mm seed. We have to collect this seed sample, 4.75 mm seed sample. Then here there is a two apparatus available for finding specific gravity. In case of fine grain soil, we are supposed to make use of this density model for finding specific gravity. In case of coarse material for sand, gravel, the better result we can get from the, the apparatus called pycnometer. Here this is the way. So like this. So now how to do this test? First, before going for the test, first we have to make use of any, we have to decide which one we have to make use. If we are, uh, this is called a conical flask of uh, 50 ml, this is of 500 ml of uh, pycnometer. First what we have to do is, we have to clean it properly. We have to, uh, there should not be any sediments or salt deposit over this bottle. First we have to wipe it with the distilled water, we have to clean everything. Then with the help of uh, dry cloth we have to uh, wipe off all the water stick over the surface. Now this is a dry condition. Now we have to measure the weight, sorry, mass of the empty weight of this container. This is the first step before proceeding we have to do. Next what we have to do? Then we have to take the soil sample, sealed sample we have to take. So this may be of 200 gram or something. Uh, up to one third of pycnometer we have to fill the dry soil on which we are supposed to find the specific gravity. We have to fill for one by third or sometimes one half. After filling this, we have to close the slit and wipe off the sediment stick over the surface. Then we have to measure the mass. This is called mass 2, M2. Next step what we have to do is, here there is a presence of soil. Now we have to close the lid. We have to close the lid tightly. Now we are supposed to add a water. Add a water inside this top cone. Water will be filled up to the top of the cone. Up to top of the cone we have to fill the water. Now this pycnometer contains empty weight and soil and the water. This mass is called M3 or weight 3, W3. Once we record this mass, we have to remove the soil present inside, water inside, we have to clean it properly. After that, we have to fill the water alone in this pycnometer up to top. So this is called, uh, now we have to uh, measure the mass of this container plus water alone. This is called M4. So now we have M1, M2, M3, M4. Uh, based on these four values, there is a formula available m2 minus m1 by m2, uh, the big formula available that I will share in the observation. You can substitute all the value by this, you will get specific gravity directly. Now, here I am in a soil mechanics laboratory of uh, our department or uh, uh, college. I am here. So, what are the recordings or what are the observation? I am getting a specific gravity for room temperature. But in standard, for example, if I take, if I connect the test in a, any other environment, coolest environment or a hottest environment, but we need a standard reference. So now what I have to do is, whatever the specific gravity I have measured here, that must be converted to the standard temperature. This room temperature meaning to be transferred to the 
standard temperature of 27 degree. For that, there is a correction factor for each. Uh, uh, I have to measure with the help of thermometer. I have to measure this room temperature. For a particular temperature, there is a correlation. Uh, there, there is a correlation table available that, uh, that also available in our observation. At lab, the temperature is 29 degree means I have to reduce the value. There is a some factor, K the factor is there. That factor value will be available in a table column that we have to make use and proceed. So in between, I just mentioned first step, empty container only. In second step, I have to fill the dry soil. In the third step, I have to pour the water up to this top. Now once I just add a water, I can't be able to make sure all water are occupied inside the voids. There will be more chance for presence of air voids in that. So to remove that, what I have to do? Uh, water may be the uh, flask work. If you are using conical as well as this, uh, uh, this container, pycnometer. In case of pycnometer, we are supposed to use uh, coarse grain soil, sand or gravel. By shaking itself, all air get, comes out. But while going for fine grain soil, like the clay, removal of air inside the soil is not easier. So what I have to do is, once the soil is filled, I have to fill the water for a half mark. Then this must be kept on this hot plate. Here we, there is an uh, adjustment of temperature. Here I have to increase the temperature and make the water to boil. Because of boiling, whatever the air present inside the soil particles will come out. Water will occupy inside the region. So by this, we have to leave it for uh, Five to ten, uh, uh, two to three minutes. By after taking this, we can remove that, remove that extra air present inside the soil. By this way, once we have to switch off, then we have to wait maybe for few minutes. It must get desiccated automatically by natural itself. Once it get come back to the normal temperature, then we have to add additional water up to the top. Then we have to proceed the apparatus. So with this, let me conclude the test. The past time.